you have your Bible, turn to Psalm 23. We're going to talk for just a, a few minutes. I know a lot of you got to get out and get to lunch in a few minutes. Got a big football game on today. Kansas City Chiefs and the Buffalo Bills, huh? I am uh, just as the staff setting up for our service here today. I, I've turned into a Buffalo Bills fan because my new son-in-law, uh, Jack, is an avid. I mean, maniac Buffalo Bills fan. That's where he's from. Of course, my family's from Buff Buffalo. So uh, I want to keep a good relationship with my son-in-law. How many know? How many know that's a good thing? Yeah. So I am officially a Buffalo Bills fan. So I'll be watching the game today. But we do want to get into the Word just a few minutes, and uh, we're going to go to Psalm 23, and I'm going to take it really easy on you today. I've only got four words that I want you to remember. And I'm going to put them up here on posters in just a few moments. And we're just going to look at four words. And we are going to, I believe, finish up Psalm 23 today. And next week we'll move on to something else. We're in a year-long series on the book of Psalms. We've taken all year long in just the book of Psalms. And we're right now we're in Psalm 23. And we are winding down, so we're going to get into Psalm uh, 23. If you're with me, let me hear a big amen. amen. So Psalm 23 is um, probably the most popular psalm in all the Bible. And I'm going to look at four words today that we are going to look at. And you've got your notes. You can follow along. And, and, and those of you that are online, you can go, uh, go to our website and pull up our sermon notes. So here's the scriptures that we're going to look at today out of Psalm 23. We talked about this last week. Psalm 23, verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Last week we talked about how God wants us to live in victory and he will make a table before us. We had a powerful service uh, last week and as we just talked about the power of sitting and allowing God to be your victory. And so the first word that I want you to just write in your notes and maybe write in your Bible is just the word victory. Everyone say victory with me. Now watch this. It is important that you and I live a victorious life. You can't live your whole life defeated all the time, beat up, always in trouble and always in debt and always struggling. God wants you as believers, as Christians, to live in victory. I grew up in the church. My dad was a pastor. My dad was a pastor at this church. This church is 105 years old, and my dad was a pastor, and now, obviously, I'm the pastor. And, and I, I've grown up around church people my whole life. I get really frustrated when church people are always defeated. They never live in victory. Doesn't make sense to me. They're, we're here... When I grew up in church, we went Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, every week. And it seemed like the people that were going to the church the most were living in defeat. Always have problems, always have issues, always getting beat up by the devil. And it was frustrating to me because I would read my Bible and I would see that the Bible is filled with, with victory with success, with, 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 with being an overcomer, and yet all the people I dealt with were getting beat up all the time. And they'd come into church and say, oh, pastor, pray for me. I'm getting beat up this week. And they were just living in defeat. Part of the beauty of Psalm 23 is God says, I'm going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. You don't have to live in defeat all the time. You don't have to always get beat up by the enemy. You can have a table set for you in the presence of your enemies, and you can walk in victory. Now, you've got to have this, and you've got to believe it. You've got to believe that God wants you to be victorious because this begins to set everything in motion. Then David goes on to say, you anoint my head 
with oil. Now, the word I want you to write down to your notes, and, and, and it's a Bible word, and it's, it's the word anointing. Another word you could use for this is empower. God gives you victory over your enemies, and he anoints you. He empowers you. He gives you the ability to live this life and to make a difference, and you are anointed. Now remember, the word Christ, that word there means the anointed one. That's his name. Jesus Christ, his name means I'm anointed. Watch this. I'm, in, I'm empowered. Jesus said this. There in your notes, Luke 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. And he anointed Christ to bring freedom and deliverance and change to the world. Now, if you are a follower of Christ, and by the way, how many are followers of Jesus Christ? Can I see your hand? About half of you. The rest of you sleeping. If you are a Christ follower, that means that you are anointed. You're empowered. You have the tools needed to make a difference and to make this world better. So watch this. God gives you victory over your enemies, and he sets a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He anoints your head with oil. He gives you the ability to make a difference and to be empowered. I call it the it factor. You can see it. You can sense it. There, there is an empowering that comes on us as believers, not just to preach or to sing or to go to church, but you are anointed to be a great mom. You are anointed to be a great dad. You are anointed to be a great business person. God wants you to be successful for his glory, and you are anointed to live that because he anoints you with oil. Now watch this. It starts at the head, and it goes from the head to the heart, and from the heart to the feet. So that's everything you touch, everything you do, you are empowered by Christ, the anointed one. i got to move quickly. Victory. Everyone say victory. victory. Number two, anointing. You anoint my head with oil. Now watch this. Because you are victorious, because you are anointed, my cup overflows. I use the word impact. Your cup overflows and that is for you and for others. When you walk in victory and you are anointed, automatically your cup overflows. And if you've been with Jesus and you're walking with Jesus, and you are a disciple of Jesus, you will automatically overflow. Who have you been with? Who have you been filled with? You show me who you hang around, and I will show you the person you have become. As Christ followers, we want to get next to Christ. We want to get with Christ and we want his character and his anointing to be on us so that our cup overflows. See, God wants you to have a full cup and he also wants you to overflow so you can make a difference in other people's lives. And can I tell you something? Every time you meet with your employees, every time you are, 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 are engaging with your kids, your grandkids, your neighbors, your friends, there should be an overflow that comes out of you that makes a difference in people's lives. You walk in victory, you walk in the anointing or the empowering, God automatically gives you the ability to overflow and have an impact. Now, this is what I want to talk about, and I've only got a few more minutes. And I love this. Here it is. Because I walk in victory, because I'm anointed, my cup overflows. Watch this. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I call that grace. Grace. 
Now, I'm going to illustrate how goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. Are you ready? All right, uh, Jim and Tim, you guys come up here. And I'm going to illustrate this, and then we're going to go today. Surely goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life. How many of you are here today, and you want to have goodness and mercy follow you? Okay, watch how it happens. So this is, uh, this is Tim, this is Jim, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to illustrate how goodness... And mercy are going to follow me all the days of my life. Now watch this. Watch this. I don't follow goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy follow me. See, your responsibility, if you want to live in victory and anointing and impact and grace... All you have to do is follow the good shepherd. And when you follow the good shepherd and you're connected to the good shepherd and you are worshiping the good shepherd and you are coming to church and reading your Bible and living the kind of life that, you want to, that God wants you to live, you are following the good shepherd. You can be guaranteed that for the rest of your life, goodness and mercy will follow you. I don't have to wake up on Monday morning and wondering if goodness and mercy are going to be there. Why? Because goodness and mercy is promised to us all the days of our life. Are you all with me this morning? Now watch this. I want to talk to goodness. By the way, you guys look great, by the way. Thank you. Tim, come over here next to, next to. Here's grace, goodness, and mercy. I want to talk to these guys just for a couple minutes, okay? First of all, I want to, I want to thank you. For always being there. I want to thank you for, for following me. I want to thank you that I don't ever have to doubt that you're not going to be there. I am promised that you are going to follow me all the days of my life. And when I need you, you're going to be there for me. You know, the world we're living in today is filled with a lot of anger. It's filled with a lot of resentment. We're getting ready to go into the election season. A lot of tension. A lot of tension between the races. A lot of tension between different political parties. And goodness and mercy, I want to thank you guys that in the middle of even election season, you're going to be with me. And when I need you, you're going to be there for the rest of my life. Now, as you are walking through life, you don't realize that you are being followed. And it's a good thing. How many know that being followed sometimes, that, 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 could, be, that, that, that could be pretty bad? But as a believer... Because you live in victory, because you are anointed, because your cup overflows, you now walk in a grace that enables you to be followed for the rest of your life. And the two that are following you is goodness and mercy. So when I wake up on Monday morning, I don't have to wonder if grace and mercy are going to follow me. I know that for the rest of my life, Goodness and mercy are going to be there. When I don't feel like it, guess what? Goodness and mercy are there. When I'm going through tough times, guess what? I can always depend on goodness and mercy to be there. Not just on Sunday mornings. Every day, 24 hours a day, I can always look back and goodness and mercy are going to be there all the days of my life. I don't have to pray, God, please let goodness and mercy follow me today. Why? Because it's been promised. There is a grace that has been given, and the grace says for the rest of your life, 
goodness and mercy are going to, and we, we're in a backlog here, so let me get around here. You guys just following me? Goodness and mercy are going to follow me all the days of my life. Now watch this. When I need goodness or I need mercy, I can always depend that they're going to give it to me. Let me illustrate this. Before you leave today, you are going to get a million-dollar bill from Pastor Scott. A million-dollar bill. On the front, it says mercy, and on the back, it says goodness. Now watch this. Mercy and goodness will give you what you need so you can give it to other people and make a difference in this world. So when I need goodness, I don't have to try to muster goodness up. Why? Because I can reach back and goodness is going to give me the good that I need to make a difference in this world. When I encounter someone who needs mercy, I don't have to try to work up mercy. Why? Goodness and mercy follows me, and when I need mercy, all I got to do is reach back and what? Mercy empowers me to give this mercy away. Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And whenever I need goodness and mercy, all I have to do is turn around and goodness and mercy will be there to help me, empower me, to give that goodness and mercy away to other people. Isn't that good? Let me tell you a couple stories about two guys by the name of Peter and John. The Bible says that Peter and John were, were, were on their way to church one day. And they came up to the city gate. Watch this. And the city gate was called the City Beautiful. Everyone say Beautiful. And there was, a, there was a beggar who was at the city gate. He was crippled, been there for years. And as they're walking to church, Peter and John are just minding their own business, and, and, and they saw this beggar on the side of the road at the gate beautiful, and the Bible says this beggar cried out for help. Would you please help me? I need some money. I need some food. I need some prayer. And Peter and John, the Bible says, caught his eye at that city gate. And Peter and John said something really powerful. Peter and John said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you. Now, the Bible doesn't say this, but Peter and John, watch this, tapped into the mercy. They tapped into the grace that was following them, and they said to that blind, that blind beggar, uh, a man who was begging on the side of the road, silver and gold I don't have, but I do have mercy, and I do have goodness. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. That man was instantly healed. Why? Because Peter and John were tapping into a power that you and I have, and it's called goodness, and it's called mercy. There's a story in the New Testament of Jesus. The Bible says he was walking through the town, and the elders of the church came and brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. It's interesting how they only brought the woman, they didn't bring the man. Last time I checked, it takes two to tangle, but that's another story. It says, the law says that she deserves death because she was caught in the act of adultery. And now they pin Jesus in, and now he's in front of all these angry people and this, this woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. And what did Jesus do in this beautiful moment? They got stones in their hands. They're getting ready to stone the woman. And they said, what do you say? And Jesus says, if you're without sin, cast the first stone. And one by one, the religious leaders put their stones down, and they left. And then it was just Jesus and the woman. And Jesus said, where are your accusers? And she says, I don't have any more. Then Jesus says, neither do I condemn you. Go 
and sin no more. What did Jesus do? He tapped into goodness. He tapped into mercy. And he released that woman because goodness and mercy was following him all the days of his life. See, you're going to come in contact with somebody this week. Employee, a neighbor, a relative, and we've got Thanksgiving coming up in a few weeks. How I many of that's a volatile time, isn't it? <laughs> Politics, people on both sides of the aisle. I'm praying that God would raise up men and women and, and, and Belle Isle Community Church that are full of goodness and mercy. Full of goodness and mercy. That whenever they're walking around, they just know that they know that goodness and mercy is going to be there for them. And when they need it, they can reach back and receive it and then what? Give it away. Because we've been forgiven much. We love much. And I'm praying that God would fill men and women in Belle Isle Community Church that are full of goodness and mercy. And I pray that you would walk in that confidence knowing that wherever you go, whatever you do, you're always being followed by goodness and mercy. So when you leave today, I'm going to give you a, a million dollar bill. I want you to put it in your pocket. I want you to hang on to it and I want you to wait for the opportunity this week not to release judgment, not to release condemnation, but to release goodness and mercy, even when you don't feel like it, because goodness and mercy will always follow you all the days of your life. Would you give Jim and Tim a big round of applause? Guys, thank you very much. Goodness and mercy, thank you guys. Bruce, if you'll come up to the keyboard, I, I want to end with a quick story. Now, I... I hesitate telling you this story because I don't want you to think that I always get it right because most times, like you, I get it wrong. I don't want you to think just because I'm a pastor that I'm like, I'm always on. There are days when I'm not on. There are days when I don't do the right thing. There are days when I mess up just like you do. I'm human, just like you. But something happened this week that, that just reminded me of this story. And I didn't do what, I was, what I'm about to tell you. I didn't do it because I was getting ready to preach and I needed a good illustration. I just did it because I've lived this my whole life. Goodness and mercy follow me. I don't have a doubt. I know they're there. And I've seen it multiple times where I just reach back and I don't have it in me. But I know that through God's power and through the power of the Holy Spirit, goodness and mercy is always available for me to tap into. I'll tell you two stories real quick. A couple years ago, we were in New York City, my wife and I, Tammy. And uh, it was a Saturday night. We went to a beautiful Broadway show. It was fantastic. Next morning, we woke up and went to Times Square Church in, in, in Times Square. David Wilkerson used to be the pastor. And I remember a big, beautiful auditorium filled with people worshiping God. I remember looking at Tammy saying, you know what, last night we saw the world's greatest production and now here we are on a Sunday morning and there's a beautiful presence of God in this place. It was priceless. It was better than the Broadway show. I just enjoyed the beautiful presence of God. So church was over and uh, when Tammy goes to New York, she likes to shop. So she wanted to shop immediately. And I said, all right, I'll wait for you as you shop. Guys, that's the right response. I'll be here for you. She went shopping, so I went just and stood and observed. And I heard some yelling. I'm like, Man, I, someone's in a fight. I need to go over and check this out. And, and, and I thought there was a fight going on. And lo and behold, there was a man on the side of the street corner. And he had a he had a sign that said, you're going to hell. 
sinners. Repent, you're going to hell. And he was yelling at the top of his lungs with this poster that said, you know, you're going to hell. I'm like, wow, that's interesting. And I watched the reaction of people. And every single person that I saw for like 10 minutes was absolutely put off by what this guy was doing. If I'm thinking, well, I'm a pastor, maybe I can help. So I walked up to the guy during, during his little break. I said, hi, I, I'm Scott, and I'm a, I'm a pastor, and I've been, I've been watching what's been going on. And I said, I don't know if you noticed, but like every single person that's walked by you, you're really hacking them off. And you're not really, from what I see, I mean, you're not making a really, really good impact. And then I said this, and it really made him mad. I said, I said, don't you know there's a scripture in Romans that says, it's God's goodness that brings people to repentance. And that really made him mad. And he got up from his little five-minute coffee break and went back to telling people how bad they were and that they were going to hell. You know what, like I would have done? I'd have been handed out goodness dollars. Telling people that God's good and, and, and God loves them and, and there's mercy available. Well, that's not what he wanted to do. He wanted to spend his life and his ministry telling people that they're sinners and they're going to hell. Would have been a good time for a, a goodness dollar. Would have been a good time for a mercy dollar. Because it's the goodness of God that brings men to repentance. So Austin and I were having lunch on Friday. And we went to Jalapenas. That's the name of it, in, in Maitland. I don't want you to go there because every time I go there, there's no one in there, and I can walk right in. And it's a great little restaurant, and I just love it. Great food. Terrell's better than the Mexican place we go to over here on, in, in Conway. And so Austin and I were, were, were having lunch together, and, and it was interesting because I watched the news that morning, and I watched a segment that talked about how policemen all over the country are leaving the police force in thousands and they're turning into firemen because they say that they're not appreciated, they're not loved, they're at risk, and so the thousands of policemen are leaving the force to become firemen. And I just thought it was interesting. I turned off the TV, went to lunch, and Austin and I are having uh, tacos and a Diet Coke, and in walk a Maitland police officer. Now, I normally don't do this, but as soon as she walked in, I felt like the Lord say to me, buy her lunch. It only cost $12. So uh, she came over. I said, I said, ma'am, first of all, I want to thank you for your service. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for laying your life on the line for our community. And the second question is, can I buy you lunch? She said, no, you don't have to. I said, I know I don't have to, but I want to. Can I buy your lunch? She said, no, I really don't have to. I said, ma'am, I know I don't have to. I want to. She reluctantly after like four or five times she said yeah that's okay and I bought her a $12 lunch at Jalapenas in Maitland you know what happened I reached back and tapped into the people that were following me their names goodness and mercy and I said guys I need you and they gave me a currency that all I did was use to pay it forward and to live like Jesus and to be like Peter and John and to release goodness and mercy into this world. Now, I don't tell you that to make me look good. I didn't want to say the, the story to you today, but I wanted to illustrate how simple it is to simply allow the goodness and the kindness and the mercy that's following you to be released in the world today. There are people that are different color than you that need you to be full of goodness and kindness. There are people that you don't agree with that need you to be full of goodness and mercy. In this election season, now more than ever, America needs people that are filled with goodness and and mercy. That's our calling. 
That's why God anoints us. That's why our cup overflows to release the goodness and mercy into this world. And God wants to use you. Would you stand up across the auditorium today?